Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Yesterday we finally got the final reveal stream of Hearthstone's upcoming Rastakhan's Rumble expansion and we now have access to all the cards. I'll be taking a deeper look into all the archetypes and everything that these cards will enable in the coming days, but first let's take a look at all the cards that have been revealed. The final reveal stream <laughs> dumped 36 cards on us, so this is going to be a two-part video. In this first part, we're taking a look at 18 cards that were revealed. First up, we have Ornery Tortoise, a 3 mana 3 5 beast with a battle cry to deal 5 damage to your hero. This was showcased as part of a heal paladin deck that wanted to damage itself so that it could heal up afterwards. But I don't think this card is going to see any actual play. A 3 mana 3 5 simply doesn't reward you enough for the damage taken. You could argue that okay, you want to play this in like an aggressive deck. Aggressive decks play stuff like flame imps and they deal damage to your face. Yeah, they do. And that's really strong tempo early on. And this one, even though that 5 health means that it kind of survives, then also that 3 attack means that it's not a very huge threat. I could maybe see this do something with like Houndmaster, but for a Paladin deck, that even though it has healing, this might just be a bit too much of a price to pay. We also got to see a Warlock removal spell, Demon Bolt. 8 mana, destroy a minion, costs 1 less for each minion you control. And first off, don't put this in your zoo deck. You really, really don't want to put this in your zoo deck. So it doesn't want a card like this, you're much better off running Soul Fire. And if you're playing Control, you're going to be much better off running Siphon Soul. So please, don't play Demon Vault. Amongst the new healing cards, there's Flash of Light, a 2 mana spell, restore 4 health and draw a card. And this is an interesting card. It is very similar to another Paladin card, the Potion of Heroism, which is 2 mana, give a minion Divine Shield and draw a card. But it's a bit situational which one of these is better. I would even say that Flash of Light is probably going to be better in many situations. Because you can use it on an already damaged minion, you can use it to heal your face and draw a card even if you have no minions on the board. Or if you really want to draw a card then healing an opponent's minion is generally less bad than giving them Divine Shield, because then you can still clear it through damage or something. And it's really important for this card that it has this cantrip effect, draw a card, so you use this and you get to cycle through your deck. So definitely a playable card. More Warlock token support. Blood Troll Sapper, a 7 mana 5 8. After a friendly minion dies, deal 2 damage to the enemy hero. Warlock is getting lots of these sorts of token support, but the big question is where do those tokens come from? There aren't great token generators, and don't tell me how Rick the Bat is a great token generator, because it is not. Those 5-8 stats for 7 mana are not too impressive, and it's just very, very difficult to make any use of this. Keeping up with the Heladin and that self damage team, Paladin is getting a new weapon, Blood Claw, a 1 mana 2-2 two -two weapon with a battle cry to deal 5 damage to your hero. Okay, that enables you to then heal and you can get stuff like Divine Shields back on a Glass Knight and things like this. But there is actually already a card in the game, which does similar things but better, which is the Crystallizer. 1 mana 1 tree, with a battle cry to deal 5 damage, but gain 5 armor instead. 5 damage to your face on turn 1 if you're playing control deck versus aggro deck, even if you're playing a healing deck, that is a lot. Then you could maybe put this in something like an Odd Paladin, and maybe you can use this to protect your board while your minions go face, that's a possibility. It really depends a lot on what kind of meta we're seeing. So if there are lots of 2 health minions in the meta, 2 health 1 drops, 2 health 2 drops, then the Blood Claw can be useful. If there are minions like the Crystallizer, which have 3 health, then the Blood Claw is much less impressive. But hey, we did get some exciting cards too, and I'm actually pretty excited about this little fellow. GD Angle Biter. 2 mana 2 one with a lifesteal and battle cry to deal 1 damage. And because the minion has lifesteal, then the battle cry also has lifesteal. So it deals 1 damage and it lifesteals from that. And I'm particularly excited about this in decks that want to run stuff like Happy Ghouls and Light Wardens. And because if you take a look at Heal 2 right now, one of the weakest cards in Heal 2 is Voodoo Doctor. 
Okay, getting that down for one mana, getting the healing effect for one mana, there are definite upsides to it. But otherwise Voodoo Doctor is just very unimpressive. And I could totally see Chidi Anglebiter taking Voodoo Doctor's place because that one damage can be crucial in getting something off the board while triggering a healing effect, getting Happy Ghoul, getting Light Warden out. And if it cannot be answered, you can also attack with it next turn because it has lifesteal and the healing effect will go off again. And then that's another opportunity to play Happy Ghoul or Light Warden. So this is a pretty interesting little guy. Another neutral minion, Banana Buffoon. A 3 mana 2 2 with a battle cry to add 2 bananas to your hand. So if you were to just buff this up, it would be a 5 mana 4 4, and that's obviously terrible, because even 4 mana 4 4s have a tough time seeing play. So you want something else for those bananas. Using them on tokens, pretty unimpressive. So what you really want to do with those bananas is stuff like open the way gate, or get you an auctioneer, or Lyra the Sunshard. Thing is, I have a hard time actually seeing Banana Buffoon fit in any of those archetypes. But if it were to see any play, it would be in something where you can use those bananas for some other effect. The new rogue weapon on the other hand is looking pretty interesting. Serrated Tooth. A 1 mana 1 tree weapon with a death rattle give you minions rush. And this might see playing something like a pirate rogue, because you could play Serrated Tooth on 1, and then you could play Sharkfin Fan on 2, and then you can attack, and you can summon some pirates. And after a couple of attacks, you can prepare for some kind of a turn where you play a pirate that has rush, for example, the Ticket Scalper, which will draw cards when it has rush. Definitely a playable card. And it allows you to have a weapon on one for a rogue, even if you're not playing even rogue. A new druid zero mana spell, Pounds. Give your hero plus two attack this turn. And I actually think Pounds is a pretty interesting card, because a bit like Spellstone, there's some potential for some early removal. And one of the upsides of Pounds is that it's zero mana. So there are often cases where you want to play ultimate infestation, but you need to make some room in your hand. Or you play ultimate infestation and you're going to get to 10 cards and you have to get something that you can play for zero. And the traditional answer is the arcane tyrant. But sometimes you can't draw that arcane tyrant. So if you can draw pounds with ultimate infestation, you might be able to play that one and avoid overdrawing. And you could use pounds in some earlier stages of the game just to remove some nasty minions. I don't think the attack druid has a lot going for it, but I could see Pounce as an alternative for early game removal for more traditional druid archetypes. An interesting neutral stealth minion, Halftime Scavenger, a 4 mana 3 5 with stealth and overkill gain 3 armor. The overkill effect is probably not going to be very useful, I really can't see what the use of that would be. But a 4 mana Stelter, we don't have any good 4 mana Stelters in the format right now. The closest we have is Strangleton Tiger, which is a 5 mana 5-5. Five, five. And that's kind of the problem with Halftime Scavenger, because I don't put a lot of value on its overkill ability, and that means that going in one turn later with that Strangleton Tiger just seems like it would be better. We also got a big taunt, and when I say a big taunt, I mean a big taunt. 8 mana 2, 14, Taunt and Divine Shield, Mosh Og Enforcer. In addition to being the favorite food of Cabal Shadow Priests everywhere in the planet, this can also be a decent pull from Master Oak Hut, but that's the problem that usually when you play Master Oak Hut, the two attack minion that you want to pull is Dragon Hatcher. So good Mosh Og Enforcer replace Dragon Hatcher, maybe in some kind of a non-dragon build, would it then be something else than a druid? Maybe? Or perhaps it could see play in some kind of combo priest. That 14 health is quite a lot. Jam in some inner fire on that and go to face. It's a card that is unlikely to see play, but because it has some very specific applications thanks to that incredible amount of health, there's always a chance that there can be some kind of a use for this one. More dragons, yay! A neutral dragon, 5 mana 3, 6, dragon more scorcher, battle cry deal 1 damage to all other minions. So it's a bit like Ravaging Ghoul. Ravaging Ghoul is in wild right now. Ravaging Ghoul is a 3 mana 3, 3, battle cry deal 1 damage to all other minions. 
thing is, they don't want damage to all of the minions. It's much, much better when you can do it for 3 mana than when you can do it for 5 mana. So Ravaging Ghoul was clearly a superior card, but this one is a dragon, so it has those dragon synergies. So in a dragon deck, if you're looking for a 5 mana dragon, and maybe you're playing warrior, you have frothing berserkers and stuff, this can definitely be a useful card. Its main competition in the 5 mana slot is the Cobalt Scalebane. And the Cobalt Scalebane is a seriously good card. So maybe in something a bit more controlly, then of course you don't have those frothing berserkers. But it's a decent minion. It can definitely see play. Hunter is getting a new weapon. Yay! Hunter has not had that many weapons lately. Headhunter's Hatchet, a 2 mana 2 2 weapon, will battle cry if you control a beast gain plus 1 durability. So a 2 mana 2 3 weapon if you have a beast on board. And that's decent enough. This could see play in some kind of mid range build or beast build. There's Springpaw, which is a new minion now, a 1 mana beast. There's Diamol, is a 1 mana beast. Typically, what you really want to do is curve from these into Crackling Razor more. But you can always draw Crackling Razor more, so maybe you could play with Springpaws, Diamols, Razor Maws, and Headhunter's Hatchet in the mix. Again, it really depends on how much is the 2 attack going to do. Are there going to be a lot of 2 health minions in the meta? If there are, this is a pretty good one. You can use this to control the board while your minions get to go face. If everything has 3 health, then it's much more difficult to make good use of this. The new hunter spirit is here. Spirit of the Lynx. A 3 mana 0 tree stealth for one turn, so basic spirit stuff. Whenever you summon a beast, give it plus one plus one. And it's important to note that this is indeed a summon effect, so any way you get beasts on the board, like from Unleash the Hounds, and all of them will get plus one plus one. It's not only when you play cards directly from your hand, although those of course also get buffed. Animal companions get buffed, but there are some downsides to it. It only works with beasts, so if you play Call of the Master, and you would like to put a couple of Spirit of the Lynxes into your deck. That pretty much takes the non-beast slots you have available if you want reliable calls of the Master. And is Spirit of the Lynx powerful enough when you could use that slot to put in like Houndmaster or Houndmaster Shaw? It's a bit difficult to see this making the cut in a Call of the Master deck. And also Tree Mana. Tree Mana is where all the good Hunter cards are. It's where Animal Companion is, it's where Kill Command is, it's where Eagle Horn Bow is. It's in a bit of an awkward mana slot too. It's definitely an interesting card if you can summon beasts like you can, for example, with Unleash. It has some power. We got a neutral hand buff card. Arena Fanatic, a 4 mana 2 tree with a battle cry, give all minions in your hand plus 1 plus 1. You're paying quite a price for the effect because this is a 2 drop stat line. And I have a hard time seeing how you can actually make use of this one. Hand buff as a whole has been a very difficult mechanic. It does have the best way hand buff can work, which is to give all minions in your hand the buff. So that gives it some hope, but still the sacrifice in stat line for this mana cost is pretty huge. The hunter legendary Loa is Halazi the Lynx. A 5 mana tree to with a battle cry to fill your hand with 1-1 one -one Lynxes that have rush. Okay, that can solve some of your issues with resource generation, but why do you really use this? I mean, it goes great with Spirit of the Lynx. Again, having a handful of 1-1s, one you can then start playing those 1-1s one and all of them will be 2-2s. Two okay, sounds decent enough. On the surface it goes well with the Marsh Queen, the Hunter quest that has never been able to be played in any actually playable deck. But the fact is that if you try to complete the Marsh Queen with Halazi, Halazi costs 5, so that's your turn 5. On turn 6 you start jamming those minions, okay that was your turn 6. On turn 7 you finally play Karnasa. Even in the best case scenario that's not a very early quest. So it's a bit difficult to see how that would work out. And then if you think about the longevity that this gives you, because obviously 5 mana 3 2 is a terrible minion, but okay, you are going to get value. But Hunter already has access to a card that gives them value. It costs 6 mana. It's called Deathstuck Rexa. If I want to sacrifice tempo for value, I can already do it quite effectively. But still, getting up to 10 1 1s with Rush into your hand 
is an effect that can be useful in a class that doesn't have a lot of card draw, so it can run out of resources. Whether that effect is actually powerful enough, I'm not quite convinced, but I'm sure a bunch of people will try to make it work. Warrior got another Dragon Synergy card, one more time, with the feel. Dragon Roar. A 2 mana spell to add 2 random dragons to your hand. I actually quite like this card, because if you think about what has slow warrior decks been playing right now, they have been playing Omega Assembly. Discover mech, if you have 10 mana crystals, keep all 3 cards. Essentially, they have been playing a 1 mana card that in at least half the time it's played is going to give you 3 random mechs. And mechs are all over the place. Some mechs are great, some mechs are absolutely terrible. Dragons much less so. Most of the dragons are actually pretty good. You're pulling from a more limited pool, and you're pulling from a pool that has a lot more powerful minions compared to weak minions in it. Obviously there is a tempo cost to playing this card, so if you're playing a tempo-based Dragon Warrior deck, you might not want to include this. But if you're playing something more control-based, then this suddenly becomes a much more interesting card. It's even a cost card obviously, so you can't put it in an odd Dragon Warrior, but if you play a regular Dragon Control, then this is definitely a card worth considering. Finally, there is a new warrior spell, Devastate. One mana, deal four damage to a damaged minion. Okay, there's a dragon in the picture, but it's not a dragon synergy card as such. However, if you want to see how this is done well, I can point you to a card that is currently in the wild format, Sleep with the Fishes. Two mana, deal three damage to all damaged minions or to a card that was nerfed from its original 1 mana cost. Execute, 2 mana, destroy a damaged enemy minion. So Devastate's upside against Execute, obviously it now costs 1 mana less, and it can hit your own minions. So yeah, you can shoot your own rot face with this. And you can put this in an odd warrior deck that you can't do with Execute right now, but I still don't see it as being nearly as good as its predecessors. That was first half of the final reveal stream cards, and I will be reviewing the other batch of 18 cards soon. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.